everybody, I'm Mackenzie from Grilled Cheese Social and today I'm going to teach you how to make the ultimate perfect cheesy mac and cheese um, using a few of my favorite ingredients, Gruyere, Munster, and Burrata. Okay, so let's get it going. The first thing I'm going to do is basically caramelize some shallots and I'm going to cut these up real quick. Oops, I dropped one. I'll get another one going. I love using shallots because they're like this beautiful mix of oniony, garlicky goodness, and you can get them real little and nice. Okay, so you just peel off the outer layer of all of them. Some are really tight, and that's good. The, the tighter the skin, the fresher they are. All right, that looks good. This is about one and a half shallots, so I'm just gonna basically mince these up real little. So I'm teaching you guys how to make the ultimate mac and cheese, which is basically like the perfect dish for a rainy day. We don't really have too many of those here in New Smyrna Beach in Florida. And I thought it would be a good excuse to get on down with some comfort food. Okay, so I've got all these going. Onions, garlicky goodness. Basically, the shallot is a hybrid. Okay, so I've got my scal uh, shallots chopped up, and I'm gonna get some butter. This is some really, really nice high fat butter. Um, I like using it because it's got more flavor and it's got salt. Oh, this is a salted butter, to be, <laughs> to be clear. Okay, so I just got a pot over here, um, and then we're gonna go ahead and Get the heat going. Okay, so today I'm making um, the ultimate cheesy mac and cheese with some of my favorite cheeses. Right now, this is the beginning step where I'm gonna teach you how to make my cheese sauce. So I've just got some butter in here. Once this melts, then we're gonna start making the roux. But I basically start my roux with a um, caramelized shallots because I think it brings a nice flavor to the dish and it's super super good okay so this is melting I can go ahead and add my chopped shallots this is like my favorite tool how cool is this okay and here I'm sizzling little bit of salt to kind of draw out the moisture from those shallots and some red, red pepper flakes just to bring a little bit of depth to the dish. All right. So today I'm teaching you how to make my favorite mac and cheese. It's got Gruyere, Munster, and Burrata. So you've got that awesome fresh cheesy goodness from the Burrata with that beautiful stretch. You've got that really buttery, melty, perfect Munster cheese, and then that nutty Gruyere. So it kind of covers all your cheese bases. All right, so this is, this is looking good. And if you are lactose intolerant, um, mac and cheese probably isn't the nicest dish for you to have, but I think you can actually eat goat cheese. So maybe you could do like a nice goat cheese mac and cheese. I don't know. Hello Philippines, what's up? Talking to somebody across the world, that's pretty cool. Do you guys eat mac and cheese over there? I'll send you some, but it will probably be really bad by the time it gets there. All right, hello Wisconsin, you are my people. I'm actually using Wisconsin cheese today, so that should come as no surprise since they are my favorite. Okay, so we've got these um, shallots cooking up with nice salted butter and a little bit of red pepper flakes. It smells so good. I mean, there's truly nothing like bubbling butter in the shallots. It covers both the garlic and the onion. It smells so good. All right. 
What up, Tunisia and Chile? Oh my gosh, you guys are tuning in from all across the globe. That is so cool. Can I come visit? <laughs> we'll make you mac and cheese and any cheese dish that you want. I'll sneak it in in my bags. Okay, so this is caramelizing up. It looks so good. It smells even better. All right, so I just want these to get like, not super caramelized, but just there. I want the super pungentness of the shallot to cook out and sweeten up really nicely. And I think we're almost there, because I'm starting to, to see the little bits looking up. And I don't want to fry it, I don't want it to be crispy. Um, whoa, I'm hearing we've also got Trinidad and um, DC. We're all over the place. My cousin Autumn, what up girl? All right, okay, so this is cooking away. Smells really, really good. And now I'm just going to start making my roux. So I've just got some all-purpose flour here. And the trick to make a good roux is usually one part fat to one part flour. I'm just gonna eye it because I have never been one for measuring spoons. And to tell you the truth, it kind of stresses me out. I'm more of a freestyle girl. Okay. So right now, oh, my flame went out. So right now I'm making the roux to make our cheese sauce for the mac and cheese. I think I need a little bit more flour. And this will just kind of help make the sauce really thick and creamy. I mean, I won't really have a problem making it thick and creamy since I'm using such good cheese and um, heavy whipping cream. But, you know, if you weren't using heavy whipping cream, you could totally make a little bit more of a roux and use like skim milk, I don't even know about like milk alternatives, but maybe something like that, like almond milk or cashew milk. I don't know. It's something to play around with on a rainy day. Maybe I'll just do that later on. Okay, so my roux is cooking and we just wanna cook this for a few minutes, moving it around often so that the flour flavor cooks out. All right, it's getting gold, which is perfect. All right, now I'm gonna add in is the heavy cream. And it is heavy, especially with my left hand, which is not that good of a hand. <laughs> okay, so I've got my roux going. I'm thinking that it's about done. The bubbles are getting bigger. I can't really smell the flour anymore. I'm starting to smell more of that shallot buttery goodness. Okay, this looks perfect. It looks thick and good. Now I'm just gonna add some heavy cream. All right. And you want to make sure that your heat's not super high at this point because you don't want to scorch the cheese. Ain't nobody likes scorched cheese sauce. My boyfriend and I went to a Mexican restaurant the other day and all I really care about is cheese. So of course we got the queso and I was so sad because it just tasted like burnt disgustingness. And we don't want that. So my heat's on really low. I'm gonna turn it to more of a medium. And then we'll just cook this. All right, so while this bubbles up, I'm gonna go ahead and say hello to London. What up? Um, and yeah, someone just asked if you can use garlic instead of onion, and absolutely. Um, I'm actually using shallots here, so the the shallot is kind of like a onion garlic hybrid. It's super small. The flavor is jam packed. But if you did, you wanted to use garlic. You could even use bacon. I don't know why I didn't do that. Probably because every recipe I've done so far for the Food Network Facebook Live has had bacon. But um, but yeah, a little bit more about this dish. So it's my classic mac and cheese recipe, but it's also, it's like the perfect vessel to basically add a bunch of stuff and kind of make it its own dish. So it's like a base, a macaroni and cheese base. So you could get kind of crazy and add like chopped rosemary ham, some roasted pears and gorgonzola, that would be really good. Or like everyone loves the buffalo mac and cheese with some smoked chicken, buffalo sauce and gorgonzola. Or you could do like, hmm, I don't know, what are some of you guys' favorite combinations? Yeah. So somebody's asking about the pans and I use these pans. Someone actually said something about them being really old. But to me, that actually makes it better. These have lasted almost 50 years. This is my grandma's pot. 
um, back in the day. And, you know, I use a lot of her cookware because she's one of my biggest inspirations. She was such an amazing cook, and she was probably the most Southern woman you'll ever meet. And with that, like, kind of life lesson, you learn to not throw anything away. You keep it all until, until it basically doesn't work anymore. Yeah, so if I was using like a nonstick pan, I probably wouldn't want to use a metal whisk, but I'm using just an aluminum pan and a metal whisk, so it's fine. But yeah, you don't want to use any sort of metal on nonstick because then it gets into your um, dish and it's kind of gross. Also maybe poisonous, I don't know. The study's still open on that. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit. We're just gonna basically wait until um, the bubbles start to come around the sides and then I'll start adding my cheeses. So for my cheeses today, I'm making um, basically like a super creamy, luxurious mac and cheese. Um, I've got some chopped, or I'm sorry, some grated Gruyere, some grated Munster cheese, fresh burrata, which is my ultimate favorite. We can actually cut one of these open because I feel like that's a... All right, look at this. So burrata is like a really delicious mozzarella that's creamy in the middle. Look at that. Oh my God, do you not just want to eat that all up? So this is my trick for mac and cheese. It's not a typical ingredient, but but the burrata actually makes it super creamy and stretchy. Oh, someone just asked if you can add corn and pepper. Absolutely, you can literally add anything you want. If you're adding corn and pepper and you want a little bit of meat, I'd recommend using some sauteed chorizo or like a really nice, another kind of sausage. All good stuff. All right, so. I can see that this is thickening up. You see the little bubbles coming along the sides. All right. This looks great. Yum. Yummy, yum. Okay. So for those of you just tuning in, my name's Mackenzie Smith. I'm the blogger behind Grilled Cheese Social, which is one of the largest grilled cheese, or it is the largest grilled cheese blog on the internet. I've been making super cheesy recipes for almost seven years now. I'm also the executive chef at Black Dolphin Inn, which is where I'm cooking today. Um, I'm just doing the demo um, to kind of show you guys the perfect base for any sort of mac and cheese that you want to do. This is super creamy, it's luxurious, it's rich. It is the definition of opulence. All right. So I can see it thickening up, and this just takes a few minutes. Before we started the show, I actually went ahead and cooked the pasta. Um, I use rotini because it actually has the most surface area, and all those little ridges will fill up with cheese, so each bite will be super, super delicious and creamy. And no, I don't use chicken stock. If I'm making mac and cheese, I'm going full throttle with the heaviness, with that rich goodness. You totally can though. I just, you know, I was taught to make mac and cheese this way and it is super delicious. All right. So this is still going. Maybe just another minute. I can see the bubbles starting on the side. That's exactly what we want. We just want this cream to start reducing a little bit. Thickening up, getting that roux. Oh yeah, you can see. I don't know if you guys can actually see on the camera, but you can kind of see like a skin starting to form on top of the cream sauce or the bechamel, I guess, what it kind of is. Okay, so, oh my gosh, this morning when I got here, it was super rainy, which I thought was like the perfect excuse to make mac and cheese, but now the sun is out, but you can eat mac and cheese all the time. So I am in a bed and breakfast right now called Black Dolphin Inn. It's in New Smyrna Beach, which is in Central East Florida. All right. This looks awesome. This is actually thickening up. It looks great. All right. So now that it's bubbling, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some of the cheeses. Okay, so first I'm gonna do the Gruyere. I love Gruyere because it's rich, it's nutty, it's got 
beautiful texture that melts down really nicely. All right. And I've always been told to stir in a figure eight, which I kind of forget, but you know, it'll work anyway. Okay. And then I'll add some of the Munster. And this is, this cheese sauce is going to be stretchy. I love when you pull out a forkful and it's like, just goes like 50 feet in the air. It's so fun. Okay. Yeah, and you guys can totally use milk instead of cream. Um, just make a little bit more of the roux so that you can thicken it a little better. Oh yeah, you can see how creamy this is. I'm just gonna keep moving it around. I'm also reserving a little bit of this cheese because I'm gonna use it on the top to make like a really delicious bubbly crust. So if you can't find burrata, you can just use regular mozzarella. Burrata basically is mozzarella, but with like the creamy inside. And it's no big deal if you can't find it. It'll still be super delicious with fresh mozzarella. All right, I'm gonna taste this because that's a very important step. I'm gonna see what we need. Oh my God, it's so good. I always add a little bit of hot sauce, which you can give or take. It doesn't make it hot. Something about the vinegar and the pepper just kind of brightens the flavor a little bit. A little bit more salt. The cheese is pretty salty, so you don't really need that much. All right. So this looks awesome. Let me give it one more taste. Always get a new spoon. All right. Oh my God. If I could dump this on top of my head, I would do it. That's what they should do. Uh, <laughs> a cheese sauce challenge instead of the ice bucket challenge. All right. So this is still going. This is literally looking so good. We just want it to thicken up a little bit. And you know, someone's asking about almond milk and to tell you the truth, I've never, ever, ever made it with like a milk substitute. Um, but you could try it. I mean, why not try anything once? I'm sure the Food Network has some recipes for really tasty alternatives. I'm gonna add a little bit more cheese I've got some over here for backup for our crust, so that's okay. And this is a no-bake mac and cheese. Um, I don't really like baked mac and cheese because I think it tastes dry. Um, but you can totally bake it. And that's another little trick. If you make mac and cheese and you kind of think that it's too, like, liquidy, pop it in the oven that cheese sauce is just gonna absorb right into the noodles and it's gonna be perfect. There's lots of ways to save mac and cheese, believe me. I've tried many. Okay, so this is looking great. I've got my cooked pasta here. And then right before I add this cheese sauce to the pasta, I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh ricotta. And this is just another trick to kind of keep it extra luscious and creamy. I mean, we're going heavy hitters here with the rich ingredients, but that's okay. I mean, that's the point of mac and cheese, right? All right, this looks awesome. This, uh, okay, I'm gonna taste it one more time before we add it in. It's perfect, okay. So I've got my cooked pasta, and basically I'm gonna grab some towels so I don't burn myself out of the way. All right. All right. One second. All right, so I turn my heat off. I'm just gonna grab this and I'm gonna add a little bit at a time. Oh, that looks so good, you guys. It smells delicious. That nuttiness from the Gruyere is really coming out. All right, give it a stir. And I think it could use a little bit more because I want it even creamier. All right. So, um, if you guys want the exact recipe, I will be posting it later today on my blog, which is grilledcheesesocial.com. You can go ahead and follow me on Facebook at Grilled Cheese Social. I'll be putting alerts up. Um, when it's ready. Okay, this to me is like what you want in a mac and cheese. 
And because I know this pasta is going to start soaking up the cheese a little bit more, I'm even going to add just a teeny bit more. Okay. All right. That looks awesome. Give it one more stir. Okay. That, it kind of looks like soup, but don't be scared. It's going to cook up and get really thick as it sits. So I've just got a baking dish. And even though I'm not doing baked mac and cheese, I am going to put it in the oven for a minute um, to get a really nice royal crispy crust because I think it looks good, tastes even better. All right, let's see. Oh, and yeah, you can totally bake this. Don't, like, feel free to adjust this recipe to any way possible. It's just a really, really good base to make things nice. All right, so I'm going to put my broiler on high. How good does this look? Yum, yum, yum. Okay, and then I've got some grated cheddar and a little bit more of that grated Munster. And I'm just gonna sprinkle this on top. Oh wait, I forgot. I'm too busy thinking about the top. This is the part where we add the burrata. So basically, I'm just gonna pull it apart with clean hands and kind of stud this all over the mac and cheese. I'm gonna give it one stir before I do the crust. But this is like the most perfect cheesy surprise. I mean, when do you get to eat burrata and mac and cheese, right? All right, so I'm going, look at that. I'm just gonna squeeze it right into there. Oh, it looks so good. I love burrata. And if you don't have burrata, totally feel free to use fresh mozzarella. I mean, you could really use any cheese blend you have. I think mac and cheese is the perfect excuse to clean out the fridge. You can use up all those little bits and ends. And uh, if you're wondering how long this takes, I mean, we're making like this whole recipe in 30 minutes. Maybe a little bit longer because I'm doing it on Facebook Live. But I'm gonna go ahead and give this a stir because I want that burrata to get in there so that when you take a piece, you're like, oh my God, what is that delicious cheesiness in there? All right, and then I'll just put a few pieces on top. All right. So I am located in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. I'm the chef here at Black Dolphin Inn. We don't do dinner, we only do breakfast because we're a bed and breakfast, but I do do private dinners and of course, I have posted all my recipes on the blog, and if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm Grilled Cheese Social. On Twitter, I'm GC Social, and on Pinterest, I've got all my recipes on there. I'm a penaholic. I love it. All right, so the burrata's in there. Now I'm going to add the cheese at crust. I've got my broil on high. All right, this looks awesome. Okay, pretty, pretty, pretty. That's gonna make a really nice cheesy crust. And I don't think this is very hot. No, we're good. All right. And then, got my oven. I've got the broiler on high. I'm basically just gonna put this down here. And I'm gonna let it cook. All right, now I'm gonna show you my secret. So, to make like, you know when you put like a baked mac and cheese on top and it's got the breadcrumbs, but sometimes they cook all uneven and you get mad because it doesn't look good? I got the trick to solve that. All right. So, for those of you who, who are just now tuning in, I'm Mackenzie from GrillCheeseSocial.com. I'm teaching you how to make my favorite ultimate cheesy mac and cheese. Um, the mac and cheese is actually broiling in the oven. So don't let me forget because I am known to forget about things in the oven. So now I'm gonna melt some butter. And this is probably too much, so I'm just gonna melt a little bit of it. We'll get it going. And then I'm gonna chop up some herbs. And this we're gonna put into the, ooh, let me wipe this cutting board down a little. And someone's asking about servings. That is a hard question to answer because it all depends on how much you're gonna eat. If this is just gonna be a little side dish, I'd say you could probably get like 10 servings out of it. If it's gonna be like a full plate at dinner, you know, probably like four. 
I mean, that's probably a lot. I don't know. It depends on how much you eat. Okay, so right now I'm just chopping up some fresh sage. I love the smell of this, and then I've got thyme. And I'm gonna do a little bit of rosemary. And this is gonna make my herbaceous breadcrumbs, which I'm gonna to toast in the pan. Okay, so I've got my sage chopped up. I'm gonna do this really, really fine for the rosemary because it's kind of it's got some toothiness to it. Okay, I'm just gonna put this. Actually, I'm gonna take out some of this butter because I don't need that much. That'll be too greasy. All right, let's see. That's still too much. Ah, there we go. So now I'm going to add the herbs. I've got thyme, rosemary, and sage. And this is just gonna infuse in the butter. And then I'm gonna add some panko because it's super crispy. It, oh, I mean, it crisps up super crispy. And it's really, really nice. So we're gonna let that bubble away. And since I am using a nonstick here, I'm gonna go ahead and use a plastic spatula, just so I don't ruin the pan or scrape any of the stuff up. And you guys can see the butter's actually like turning this like really nice light green color, which is pretty fun. It smells so good in here. I'm gonna check the mac and cheese. Give it a little peek. Look at that. It's looking good. All right, so back to this. I think the butter is infused into the herbs and vice versa. Now I'm going to add some of the pinko. All right. So we're just now approaching the 30 minute mark. So if I probably wasn't talking so much, kind of instructing, you guys could make this dish in under 30 minutes. Get that pasta going right as you make the cheese sauce and just kind of pay attention to it. And so this is my secret to getting like the perfectly toasted breadcrumbs. Do it in a pan. Don't try to do it on top of the mac and cheese because, you know, it's hard to make it even, especially when all the noodles are sticking up. All right, I'm just gonna let this toast for a minute. Clean up my station and answer some questions. So I'm making my favorite recipe for mac and cheese um, you know, it's got three, or, or actually it's got four different cheeses. It's got burrata, gruyere, fresh ricotta for some luxuriousness, and then Munster because it's super buttery and it just melts up really nice. Okay, so you can see that the breadcrumbs are starting to toast. Maybe get a little breadcrumb shot in there. It smells super good. And this is a great trick to use on any sort of pasta. I like love putting toasted breadcrumbs on a ragu or even like a carbonara. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. Okay, so the herbs that I'm using again are rosemary, thyme, and sage. And I just chopped those up and I put them um, in salted butter and then I let it cook down for a few minutes, let all those flavors kind of melt together. And you can see these breadcrumbs are starting to toast. They're getting a little darker color. It's really important that you keep moving these because we don't want them to burn. All right, so this looks awesome. Just gonna keep it going. And I'm gonna double task and check the mac and cheese in the oven at one point. Oh my God, that looks so good. It's literally just what we want. Yum, 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 okay. So, I'm thinking these are done. They smell awesome. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and get the mac and cheese out of the oven. We did this all in 30 minutes, even with me blabbing away. All right, look at that. Okay, don't wanna drop it, it's so heavy. Oh yeah, so now that I'm looking at this, I think you could get like 12 servings out of this if you're using um, it as a side dish, but if you're using it as a main, I think you get even five or six. Okay, and I've got my toasted breadcrumbs. They've got rosemary, thyme, sage, 
Uh, someone just asked if you could put bacon on top, and my answer is absolutely. Okay, so write this down. Now I'm just gonna basically put these toasted herbaceous breadcrumbs on top. And it is hiding that beautiful cheesy crust, but breadcrumbs are just so good. All right. So, mac and cheese is done. To, get, to kind of walk you guys through it again, I basically made a butter flour roux with some caramelized shallots. I then added heavy cream, Munster Gruyere, and finished it with a stir of uh, ricotta. And then I added just some studs of burrata throughout the whole thing so that you get this really nice cheesy stretch. And now I am going to try some of this. So where should I go? Right here? Does that look good? Look at that. How creamy and stretchy. Look at that cheese pull, guys. Ugh, that is literally just what you want. Look at that. It smells so good. It's got these awesome cheesy strings, which I love. All right. So now here's the best part, the taste test time. All right. So this is my ultra creamy mac and cheese. It's got Gruyere, Munster, ricotta, and a little bit of a cheddar crust. Oh my gosh, look at that. Is that just, do you want that? Can I feed you guys some? It's perfect. It's literally all the things you want in a mac and cheese. It's the perfect base for any sort of mac and cheese that you want. You know, get creative. I always say like, if you're cleaning out the fridge, use all your little bits and ends of cheese, put them in to your cheese sauce, and then add whatever you want. All right, I'm taking one more bite because I can't resist. Super good. All right, guys, so if you'd like to see the recipe, if you'd like to see the recipe, you can log on to my blog at grilledcheesesocial.com or you can follow me here on Facebook at Grilled Cheese Social, Instagram, Grilled Cheese Social, and Twitter at GC Social. I'll be posting the recipe later today along with some really nice pictures and a story. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and tune in next week where I'll be making another rich and creamy cheese dish. Thanks.